Hello everybody. Once again I will be talking about people that though are not in a romantic relationship, nevertheless are in a relationship well worth our attention. Particularly that the last week we spoke about a similar marriage of convenience, so to speak. And maybe, just maybe, these matches were made in heaven. Maybe there are indeed mutual respect, fondness, appreciation, common vision, and all other components that make a relationship work. Anyway, today we'll try to figure out from morphological perspective how good Hillary Clinton's first and very important executive decision was. But for those uh, who are watching my YouTube for the first time, I just wanted to fill you in. I'm producing three different programs. One is a series of videos dealing primarily with health, healing, and psychology. The second is face reading secrets of the people in the news. And the third one is face reading secrets for successful relationships. Please click subscribe if you want to be notified each time I release a video. But next week I will have an unusual posting. I will do a short introduction to my new book on face reading that just came out. And now back to Hillary Clinton and her choice. Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine, ladies and gentlemen, will first look at them separately and then as a couple. I will start with Hillary. As I usually do, first I will talk about her face, that is her personality, and after I will talk about her profile, which is the embodiment of her temperament and tells us who a person is under the mask. Though there are inherent problems with reading Hillary because of all the facelifts that she had, I am not judging whether it is the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do to have a facelift or plastic surgery. But as I told you in the past, if you change the outside, the face, it changes the inside. And that is something we're interested in. Here is Hillary uh, and her face before and after a facelift. It's the same person within six months, <clears throat> excuse me, before she's clearly what we call moon phase, slow rhythm, uh, slowing down, motherly, caring, loving. Uh, here you see clearly almost a perfect circle with the round tip of the nose. Remember, it means naturally kind. And on the picture on the right, you see she already had this uh, nose uh, and the circle roundness of the nose uh, as a child. Then suddenly after a facelift she's back being a Venus that she was in her 20s and 30s. They tucked in here, they pulled up there and here you see back to being a Venus uh, that is creative, resourceful, peacemaker, seductive, uh, like in good old times, but without the kind nose, that, that roundness disappeared. The question is, is she living more as a moon or more as a Venus? And what about her profile? As you can see here, she morphed as well. At younger age, she is primarily a sanguine, impatient, demanding, acting upon the impulse rather than logic, short fuse and short attention span, generous, courageous, and spontaneous. But the, at the later age, photos 4, 5, and 6, she is a real bilious, willful, orderly, able to delay immediate gratification for the sake of achieving a long-term goal, in need to have and overcome obstacles, demanding on herself and others, time-conscious and logical. Quite a transformation, very unusual. And now, let's look at Hillary's running mate. As you can see, he's clearly a Mars. Remember who else is Mars? Yeah, Donald. Yes, Donald Trump himself. Isn't it fascinating? Think about it. Trump is a Mars, chooses the running mate who is a Venus. And Hillary Clinton, who is a Venus, chooses a running mate who is a Mars. Is it just co a coincidence? Out of 12 faces, Mars and Venus against Venus and Mars. So let's continue with Tim. Just to remind you, as Mars, Tim is most 
action-oriented, impatient, has short attention span, he is generous and courageous, he would rather fight than negotiate. But remember, it's all persona, the mask. Let's look deeper, let's look at some of his features. There are a couple of interesting features here. First, his forehead, picture in the middle. I think I taught about it already in face, in the YouTube face reading 101. Our face is divided in three zones. First, the forehead, it's our intellectual zone, the space where the hair begins, or used to if you're bald, and the bridge of the nose. Our social emotional zone is space between the bridge of the nose and the space right under the nose. And our physical material zone is the space from under the nose until the chin. As you can see, Tim's intellectual zone is way bigger than any other zone. So he is not too materialistic, neither he is too emotional. Everything is filtered through his intellect. Tim's ears, picture on the right, are close to the skull, meaning that he is not independent, may easily follow the beat of someone else's drum, which works well with becoming a vice president, not a president. His upper lip is thinner than his lower lip, meaning that he does not really tell you what's inside, even when he speaks. Tim uh, is naturally kind. Picture on the right, you see a little circle, just like Hillary used to be. Look at this picture. His eyebrows have this triangulation picture on the left. Uh, we call this Mercury eyebrows. It means that the person is able to be diplomatic and insightful or deceitful and insincere. He has a talent for both. Which path he chooses, of course, depends on his moral values. And now Tim's profile, which is the embodiment uh, of his temperament. It looks to me that Tim uh, has a combination of three temperaments. The nervous, you can see a clear red bow-like line and tilted forehead on pictures one and two. The bilious, see the straight blue line from the forehead to the chin on pictures two and three. And the sanguine, look at the very heavy jaw red line on the picture three. So you have a person who thinks fast and can be very creative, who is willful and organized and able to plan and execute his ideas with deliberation and precision, but also a person who loves action, spontaneity and fun. More than likely, he can turn on and off all these qualities at will, which is a great asset for a politician. And now finally, let's assess Hillary's choice and whether or not uh, this relationship will work. Well, Hillary Clinton, just like Donald Trump, chose a running mate who is the opposite of herself, meaning Tim is a great complement to her own temperament and personality. Only Trump is a Mars. He's swinging his sword without having the wisdom or patience to hide his intentions. But Hillary, with the Venus face of a peacemaker and a bilious will, can keep her intentions to herself and say what she believes will benefit her cause. She will permit her running mate to swing a sword. After all, he's a Mars and that's his job. She can choose to be straightforward while her running mate will be beating around the bush. Now we're talking about their temperament, her biliousness, so to speak, and his nervousness. But both have the bilious qualities in them. So in truth, both have long-term goals and have the will to keep going till they get what they want. Conclusion, from a morphological standpoint, Hillary made a good choice. Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine are a great team if you share their ideas, of course. 
and they are a scary and powerful firing squad if you don't. Uh, voters and perhaps history will tell us more. Uh, thanks for being with me today. Till next week.